Hey guys, today I'm looking at some works by John Yao. This is a contemporary American writer. Today's beverage is not coffee, it's Robitussin actually. The books here were published by, whoa, published by Black Sparrow Press. Previously, I really only knew him from this book as a, a sort of master of this surrealistic aleatory writing. This book was published in 2000, early 2000, 2001. And this, this book, Radiant Silhouette, is more of his earlier works and what? After reading Radiant Silhouette, I don't know, it just, uh, it gave me more looks into the writer, like sort of different lines that he was developing. It comes from this tradition of Northeastern poetry, uh, kind of like the New York School of Poetry. In addition, this other poet here, Robert Kelly, I kind of get this Bard College vibe. And like Ashbery, he's also an art critic. He's written works on Jasper Johns and Andy Warhol and one of my favorite painters, Bryce Mardin. He edited this volume of fiction. You gotta see some of the folks he was into. Gary Lutz. I might do a review on Gary Lutz at some point. Stacey Levine. There's some writers here that he had in mind as well. There's always this idea of playfulness in John Yao's work, even though for me some of the poetic forms I just lose interest in. Whenever, I guess that's a thing I have, I, I really tend to prefer prose poetry more than verse poetry. I think with prose poetry, that's just more my language. I can see when a writer is working on a blank page, it's be I'm better able to tell what the writer is trying to accomplish. Interesting things in this book, he talks about when he was a student, how he borrowed a friend's car and went on a joyride. Hey, I get this okay. image of like a 50s greaser in a way, but then he got into a massive car accident and ended up in almost near full traction at the hospital where he was just recovering for months and people around him were dying. It just seemed like this sudden thrust into this chrysalis of pain where he kind of developed a sensibility through that experience through literature. And so I got more of a sense of his personality here and just the quality of his mind just very early on with how he liked to explore things creatively. I'm used to seeing the images of gargoyles and butterflies and deposed kings. There's a really fantastic image that he paints here of some corpses being buried with their chariots alongside some live horses. And they're buried in such a way that the heads of the horses are sticking up out of the earth in a configuration that makes it look like a hand is rising up out of the earth. There's no doubt that John Yao is this connoisseur with stratospheric taste when it comes to collecting words. I kind of think of him as collecting words like someone would collect antiques. Then he arranges them in these structures or sculptures that are artworks in itself without really paying, placing too much emphasis on what the meaning of the poem is. You can always see that the syntax of his poetry is maintained. It's maintained in a friendly way, which leads me to believe that he wants you to understand or he's kind of encouraging that and yet your comprehension is thwarted at the same time. And I started to think about syntax as sort of the last thing to go uh, when it comes to even experimental literature. At the same time, I really prefer the writers that have a certain muscularity and daring to their syntax because that's where I really feel like the mind gets bent. The most surprising thing about this book for me is to is to see John Yao like write about ethnicity, but I just could never get into certain writers that use ethnicity a lot as tools. I'm just trying, I'm just interested in things that transcend even normal meaning. <laughs> and yet we've got collections like this i saw this it's actually on the shelves right now uh poetry magazine and <sighs> no oh shit they got may may that now i mean have cross new and danger how oh, fuck <laughs> just cut my sleep. leave that alone for now let's get back to why we're here, John Yao. It's just strangely gratifying consuming the texture of this man's language. It's like eating a piece of explosive ribeye steak. You know, you get like these mini orgasms happening in your mouth. And, <laughs> but anyways, that's my look at John Yao. Let me know if you guys have any recommendations for this type of, this vein of writing. And thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys on the next video.